Pam Dauber by the mid-80s was a household name. She starred opposite Robin Williams in Mork and Mindy. Which was a massive hit in the late 70s, early 80s. Who are you? I am Mork from Mork. Na -na -na -na. In addition to her sitcom fame, Pam Dauber was dating Mark Harmon who she would go on to marry. He was a star of a show called Saint Elsewhere, playing a doctor. He was People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive in 1986. They were primetime television royalty. In 1986, Pam Dauber was in the market with a new sitcom that was eventually going to be called My Sister Sam. And Pam Dauber needed a kid sister to play opposite her. We searched and searched and searched for that Patty character. And then at the end, we became so desperate because we just weren't finding the right person. When Rebecca came in, it was just clear she was the one. Hi, I'm Patty Russell, and this is my sister, Sam. I just moved in. We haven't lived together since we were kids. I was raised by our aunt and uncle. Yeah, things sure have changed. I used to dress her. I can't wear this out in public. This makes up for the haircut you gave me when I was three. The setup for My Sister Sam was pretty classic 80s stuff. Pam Dauber is a freelance photographer living in San Francisco, very successful. Everything starts like a knock at the door. You don't know what it is, but you know who it's for. Her younger sister then comes to live with her because their parents have died. So it becomes a kind of story of generational conflict. Hey, I'm just doing what I really think is the best thing oh, for you. Don't say that. What? I'm only doing what's best for the child. <laughs> Patty Russell is Hyper, <laughs> smart, 16, and um, kind of, she wants to be different, but she wants to fit in like any normal teenager. We just hit it off. She just had a very natural quality, and plus she just was so cute. She was a kid. She was a kid. She was 18, and I moved her into my house because she didn't have anywhere to stay, really. She was new to Hollywood, and uh, her parents were not with her. So she became a kind of parent. So you were roommates? So we were roommates. I drove her car, I ate her food, I you know, raided her ice box for ice cream, and she was great. I thought it was a good idea, because then she and I would become familiar with each other, and she was very open to it. So she became my little sister for a few months. Yeah, it makes a difference, you know, when you have a strong relationship off camera. Obviously on camera, it's gonna right. do wonders. You know, the show's dated. It was in the 80s, after all, but our, our stuff, the stuff that Rebecca and I did together, that was good stuff, because it was real. Here we go. Rate your mate. <laughs> you don't have a mate. <laughs> they were great together. Pam was fine being the uptight, stiff one, and Rebecca was great playing the rebellious teenager. It was a family show. At the heart of that family was Rebecca Schaefer, you know, because everyone wants her as a sister. It was a real natural talent. There was a chemistry between all of us. Everybody was part of everybody's life. It was the most amazing experience for her to have, for Rebecca to have as the first time. We were a hit show, but we were sandwiched right between Kate and Alley and the Bob Newhart show. And so we got good raised. Once she was on that show, obviously there was a fair amount of attention connected to her. She had a solo cover of Seventeen magazine. It's like being on the cover of Vogue, you know, for a young girl. To be on the cover of Seventeen, it was a very special thing. She and Pam Dobb were on the cover of TV Guide. TV Guide had 40 million readers a week. It was the number one magazine in America. When you're popular enough, the TV Guide wants to put you on the cover. These are the golden moments that don't happen very often. And so for Rebecca, I was thrilled. And it didn't really faze her. It was just like another day. Did not go to her head at all. Rebecca Schaefer was the loyal CBS soldier. She did whatever was necessary to help promote that show. Welcome to Toronto. This is Rebecca Schaefer. Half my sister Sam and I'm David Rappaport. She was on CBS's coverage of Thanksgiving Day parades across North America. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm Rebecca Schaefer and real excited to be doing this parade.
While Rebecca was finding success as an actress, she began a relationship with a UCLA film student, Brad Silberling, whom she'd met on a blind date. Silberling would go on to become a successful Hollywood director. At that point, I was 23, she was 19. We got serious very quickly, to the point where it scared the hell out of us. And, uh, you know, we were driving around months later, and she's looking at houses saying, oh, we could be there, we could be there. She didn't perceive herself as a celebrity. She didn't live that way. I don't know if I ever heard the term fame come out of her mouth. I think the whole nature of celebrity was something, maybe it was just outside of her interests. She was busy building her life and meeting people and having friends and, you know, and then she had a boyfriend. The one thing we did say to her though, you're on a hit show, we're probably gonna go. We're gonna go on this show for a while. You never put your real name on your mailbox, Rebecca. Never put your real name on your mailbox. And she said, okay, 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 I won't, I won't. It'll be fine, I won't. I was giving her that advice because I had had my own stalking problems. I mean, I literally had police helping me at one point earlier on, way before my sister Sam, because um, I'm a potentially dangerous stalker. Um, and so I never had my addresses ever on my driver's license so that you can't be found. She was wise beyond her years, but she was naive in some ways because she was very trusting. She had such an open heart. Look, Sam, a letter from E.E. E. Oh. The first time I saw her answering fan letters, she said, look, look, I'm getting fan mail, and it's great, and they're telling me their problems, and I'm answering them back, and it's wonderful. And I went, wait a minute. You're answering them back? You can't do that. And, and she said, oh, no, but I love it, and it's really fun for me, and they want to be friends. And I went, wait, they're not your friends. She was very responsible, if you will, about trying to respond to fan mail. Celebrity is a one-way relationship often, and so that seemed odd to her, and I think she felt a desire to respond in kind. I told her, I understand that this is the first time you've experienced this. The only thing you can do is sign a picture with no special note. That's it. You can't answer anything because there are people out there who will misinterpret a letter like you're their best friend. I said, don't do this. I said, it's very dangerous. Promise me you won't. She didn't promise me. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.